Okay gang, Big Daddy Roth here and I'm going to sort of lay down the, the thing we're trying to do here today. Let's go back to 1958, Renegade's Car Show in Long Beach. In the back towards the left was the Crazy Painters. And that's when Ed Roth, Tom Kelly and the Baron were doing airbrush. I mean, people were lined up to get their uh, monster t-shirts done by Ed, the Baron, and Kelly. And that idea of, of doing these uh, goofy cartoons on shirts was really just barely starting at the time. This is Ed Roth's sculpturing art, okay? One of his masterpieces. Some people will, today will not relate to it. They don't know. Morons out there, you know? I don't know, Roth always, uh, he took chances. He did whatever the hell he wanted to do. He did things that were completely outlandish, served absolutely no purpose other than to be functional art. Orbitron, probably one of the weirdest cars ever built. And that's what I loved about it. I was kind of just making a list in my mind of every one of his cars. Orbitron, no one knew what happened with it. I think I heard he sold it to Starbird, and from Starbird to some guy in Texas. And from Texas, I don't know, the orbit trying to seem to have orbit, as Ed Newton put it, orbit gone. I mean, it's one of the great mysteries of automobiles. Guys like Mark Moriarty had been looking for it 20 years, you know, putting out ads in El Paso, Texas, which was the last known whereabouts, and, you know, had literally got nothing out of it. And it was, uh, you know, about a mile <laughs> over the border from El Paso and Juarez. Sitting in front of a Mexican sex shop for the last 15 or 20 years, uh, being used as a dumpster. We flew down to El Paso. It was shocking to me that here this piece of crap could be this still incredible work of art. It was all there, I could see it. Dude, we have found Orbitron. Actually, Michael found Orbitron, and we found Michael. When I bought that car, everybody told me I was stupid because they, they said it was the biggest piece of junk that I was not. Joking around about, uh, but we were half serious, about finding the nose, because the rumor was it was in some bar. Most likely we won't find it, but we'll hit all no, the no, bars. No, we're gonna find it. How many bars are there in Juarez? <laughs> <laughs> 2000? I'm gonna call my sponsor right now. That's probably the first time I've been pulled over twice within an hour of <laughs> one another in two different countries. A truck is a cop car? We're under arrest. <laughs> no compromise whatsoever. The car had to be perfect. And that was the biggest challenge in, in restoring that car because it wasn't a perfect car to begin with. You know, where, where do you clean up the mistakes? You know, if you look at the taillights, they're a mess. But we left them that way because that's the way Roth made the taillights. The fenders are off from side to side and the bubble's off to one side and all this stuff is, is just the way Ed built things. We're contacting everybody we could that was involved with the original build. I wanted to, uh, to keep it in the family as much as possible. Ironically enough, uh, Ed Newton, Newt, designed the car, it was his first car being built, was in the middle of working with us designing another car and just helped with every little detail. I was uh, blown away at how great the crew was in wanting to get this thing exactly right. My nitpicking did not bother them a bit. Larry Watson, who originally painted the car, his understudy was Bill Carter. It was kind of like a role reversal with the two of them, so, you know, Larry's help and Bill paint the car this time. Oh, man. <laughs> That's the best <laughs> aroma on this yeah. planet. Joe Perez, uh, who did the original interior, you know, it's so funny listening to him on how Roth completely rushed him to get it done so he didn't get a chance to do it the way that he wanted to do it. I wanted people to just, when, they, when that bubble went up, or even if it was down, just go, oh, wow. But as usual, Ed was always in a big fat hurry. And here I am this time, you know, doing the same thing, going, yeah, Joe, we really need it by Saturday. We're having the event. Can you hurry up there? And, you know, he's going, oh, geez. History repeats itself, right? Dave Shutton, nut, obsessive, compulsive, crazy guy for every minute detail of the project. And that's what I wanted. I knew he was the right guy. 
There's only one Dave Shutton, man. That, that guy knows more about cars than probably anyone on Earth. I've never seen any of my dad's cars rebuilt to this particular quality. Um, it's obvious by the finished product that this was a labor of love, and to which the Roth family will always be indebted to Bo Bachman and the Galpin family. I absolutely believe that God is smiling down on Bo and the whole gang. I thought it'd be important to have a private event for the people that had been involved originally or now in the car. And uh, it was like this great reunion. Everyone got back together and we showed Orbitron and uh, I was honored on the reaction that people got. In my mind, I know Dad would be looking down from heaven on Bo and say, hey, Bo Bachman, good job. So see you later, gang. Some Big Daddy Ross signing off. Yeah.